Hello friend, Terraria is filled with many wonderful items, some of which are easier to obtain than others. One source of rare and interesting items is the ever-popular Travelling Merchant, an NPC who visits you once in a while. The Travelling Merchant brings with him coveted loot, from cell phone components to pets, and even some broken weapons. Some, quite literally, broken. But with so many items and a random assortment of supplies every time, how will you know what's good and what's not? That's where I come in. I'm here to tell you what exactly are the rarest and most important things to buy if you see your travelling merchant carrying some. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. So let's get started. First of all, you might be wondering, how do I even get a travelling merchant? Well, the travelling merchant has a roughly 20% chance of appearing every in-game day. This means that, as a baseline, you can get travelling merchants randomly when you just play the game. However, if you're in journey mode, there's a few ways to actually boost this rate. A great journey mode lifehack in general for events is to click dawn, then dusk, then dawn, then dusk to skip through the days. This actually passes days, so events like invasions, blood moons or solar eclipses have a chance to happen with every click. It's also a great way to change the moon phases for you to force werewolves to spawn or death wheat to bloom. That's just a little tip in here for ya. Strangely though, the travelling merchant's appearance isn't considered an event, so he can't appear right away at the start of the day. Put really simply, how it works is that there's a small chance of him appearing every in-game minute between 4.30am and 12pm. This means that if you're in journey mode, you can't just skip days with time frozen and hope that he appears. What you're going to have to do is skip a day to dawn, then let time move at 24 times speed. Then just wait till 12pm. If nothing happens, just skip to dusk, then to the dawn of the next day. The crucial period here is letting time run from 4.30 to 12. So just do this a couple of times and you get your travelling merchant in no time. Just note that once you've gotten one, he won't despawn if you stand next to him. However, skipping days like this won't change his stock, so just keep that in mind. So now that we know how to get travelling merchants, let's see what's worth getting. First of all, if you're into pets, then perhaps you can take a look at some of them. Personally, I love pets, but if you're low on money, I wouldn't recommend spending on these. This is probably not a priority. Although, if you know me, I'd still waste money on them anyway. The travelling merchant sells a couple of pets, but some of them are much rarer than others. The more common one would be the bamboo leaf, which summons an adorable red panda pet. The rarer ones would be stuff like the bedazzled nectar, which summons a pet butterfly, the exotic chew toy, which summons a pet fennec fox, and the birdie rattle, which summons a little pet harpy. But if you want something interesting, get the companion cube if he happens to sell one. Some of you observant gamers might realise that this is the same companion cube from the Portal series. Well, that's because it is. This is an interesting pet that may or may not stab you in complete darkness. Other than that, when it touches lava, it will scream, like so. Wonderful, isn't it? It also occasionally plays the whoopee cushion sounds. What a magnificent joker this cube is. So if you want a wacky pet, just make sure you pick up the companion cube from the travelling merchant. It's one of the rarest pets in the game, but it does cost 5 platinum though, so it's really a novelty flex kind of item. As for accessories, there are a couple that you should definitely pick up if you see them. First of all, we have the three cell phone accessories, the stopwatch, the lifeform analyzer, and the DPS meter. The lifeform analyzer is something I almost always pick up in a new world. It's particularly helpful as it helps you locate rare enemies. For example, enemies like the gnome, the nymph, or the moth is detected by this, which allows you to know when there's one nearby. It also detects bound NPCs like the goblin tinkerer, the wizard, and the mechanic. That makes finding these important NPCs so much easier. You will need all of these three accessories for the cell phone, so grab them all if you can. The building accessories here are optional, but you can pick them up if you want. These are the Presserator, the Portable Cement Mixer, 
paint sprayer, extendo grip, and the brick layer. These are all great for building convenience, but I wouldn't exactly call them absolute essentials for the average player. But if you're a builder, just go pick them up. In addition, if you do like building, Dynasty Wood might be a nice pickup. Lots of people seem to love Dynasty Wood and the Dynasty Shingles, since it gives a nice Japanese vibe. The Dynasty Wood furniture looks pretty nice as well, but like I said, this is just a building thing. But while I'm on this topic of optional stuff, I might as well cover the rare vanity outfits that he might sell. In general, if you like the vanity sets that the travelling merchant brings, just buy it since that's how vanity works. You look good, you're happy, and you enjoy the game. The capes are somewhat rare, but not that rare. They give a nice Dracula vibe if you like that. Overall, pretty cool. However, if you're only after the rarer ones, the kimono is one of the vanity items you don't see very often, so make sure to pick that up if you like collecting rare stuff. The diamond ring is also a very rare one, but it costs 2 platinum for a really small effect. Overall though, if you see an angel halo, you should probably buy that immediately. This is the rarest travelling merchant item, and I think it looks pretty good as well. It's probably one of the best novelty items ever, so yeah, pick this one up if you ever see one. If you ever see one, that is. With vanity and building out of the way, let's go to the functional items. The travelling merchant sells the sitting duck's fishing pole, the second best fishing pole in the entire game, if you don't count the hotline one of course. He sells this after you've defeated Skeletron. This is definitely worth picking up. Its price might feel a little steep at 35 gold at the start of the game, but just trust me, once you get this fishing pole, you don't really need anything else. With an amazing 40% fishing power, the Sitting Duck's fishing pole can carry you through most of your fishing tasks. Next up, we have the Ammo Box. The Ammo Box is a furniture item that you can place down. Why do we want a piece of furniture, you might ask? Well, that's because right-clicking on it gives you the Ammo Box buff which reduces your chance to consume ammo by 20%. For rangers who use hundreds and thousands of bullets, this buff makes life so much easier. Less ammo consumed means less time needed to restock and craft new stacks, which really helps you out when you're using rarer ammo, like holy arrows or chlorophyte bullets. Definitely a must-have for those using ranged weapons. Even if you're not a ranger, I'd recommend just picking one up anyway. You never know when you're going to need one, and it would be horrible to start hunting travelling merchants when you change your mind and actually want one. Another great accessory you can consider picking up is the Celestial Magnet. This accessory increases the pickup range for mana stars, and it can be combined with other mage accessories, such as the Avenger Emblem for the Celestial Emblem, or you can combine it with the Mana Flower for the Magnet Flower. Overall, this is a pretty great mage accessory, and it's worth getting if you're a mage and want that mana star pickup range. I personally don't use this, and would rather use damage or dash accessories, but it's decent enough to be worth your own consideration. If you like, you could pick up some ultra bright torches as well. I really like how these look, and as their name suggests, they are actually really ultra bright. The amount of light a single of these torches gives is more than a normal torch, and I personally think the colour is kind of pretty actually. Too many oversaturates any builds they are going for, but a few is nice I guess. As for weapons, I don't really recommend getting the yo-yos, although you can if you're doing a yo-yo playthrough, but if you check out my yo-yo guide, you realise that yo-yo progression is fine without the travelling merchant ones. They're also pretty expensive at a point in time that you can buy them, and they offer really marginal improvements over what you can get through crafting or drops. Despite all that, if you like it and want to buy one, just go ahead, it's your game. But I don't think it's an essential per se. The Pulse Bow on the other hand is a nice find though, although you'll only be able to get one after defeating Plantera. This is a ranged weapon that shoots projectiles unaffected by gravity, kind of like the space gun. However, it can also pierce enemies and can also ricochet, making it amazing for dealing with hordes of enemies during an invasion, or for setting up some nice trick shots. I think you get this a little too late in the game, but then again, any earlier might make it too overpowered. The Sergeant United Shield is another great one. You can throw this weapon which homes in on enemies and ricochets as well. But that's not all. If you right-click, you will brace for an attack 
and when timed correctly, you will parry the incoming attack, which deals damage and gives your next melee strike 5 times the damage. It's a great mix of offensive and defensive capabilities. I don't really like this weapon since you can only throw one shield at a time compared to the light disc. Timing the parry and swapping weapons is kind of a hassle and pretty clunky to do as well, but it's a great weapon if you can master how to use its parry move. Next we have the Gat Ligator. This is a hard mode gun that has a 50% chance not to consume ammo. This is the same as the Mega Shark by the way. Some people absolutely swear by this weapon, and I can see why. It deals a decent amount of damage and has a high fire rate, but I just can't get behind using this because of its highly inaccurate nature. The Gatligator has an erratic fire spread and bullet velocity. This means that you can't really aim this weapon all that well. I like hitting where I'm aiming, so this weapon is a no-go for me. But if you like a nice ranged weapon that you can get before mechanical bosses, then this is the one for you. The last and most broken thing I absolutely recommend is the Zappinator, namely the grey and orange Zappinators. The grey Zappinator is the pre-hard mode version, while the orange one is the hard mode version. Essentially, the orange one just does way more damage. When you first use this weapon, you might think it's horrible. And I agree, randomness isn't really all that attractive. After all, that's why I don't use the Gatligator. But here's the catch. The RNG behind the Zappinator is insanely broken. There's a small chance you can deal thousands of damage in a split second. This means that against bosses, it will only be a matter of time before you shave off a huge chunk of its health. Have you seen the wall of flesh explode with a pre hard mode weapon? Well... I really can't recommend this weapon enough. Once you embrace the RNG, RNGs will bless you and give you these big juicy damage numbers. Once you've tasted the ecstasy of playing with a Zappinator, you can never go back. Of all the things you have to buy from the travelling merchant, this is really the one. Even if you're not a mage, just buy one, try it out. You might absolutely love it. Or you could hate it and never use it ever again, but hey, fun is fun. That's about it for what I think is worth buying from the Travelling Merchant. There are other things that may be pretty nice or good like team blocks, but I think this video summarises the most essential ones to pick up during your playthroughs. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and other stuff. Do follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well, and join the Zuzucorn Discord server. This has been Zuzucorn. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!